when you, we call it, we call it the jujitsu handshake. When you first roll with somebody, um, it's hard to mask who you are. Like people can, you know, mess around and, and put on a mask and all kind of coffee dates and all kind of situations. But when you start to roll with each other, how they handle obstacles is how they handle obstacles. If they shy and wilt under pressure, then that is how they handle things, right? If uh, it, a lot, some people, if they are a bully, it kind of comes out and they try to brute force their way through issues. And that, that typically is how they are gonna handle those kind of, those kind of obstacles. Welcome back to the Beetle Moment Marketing Podcast. My name is Emily Bender, and I'm here with my very special guest, my friend, Mikhail Abdilla. After honorably serving in the US Army, Mikhail started training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai. He has competed and won around the world. He now owns an industry leading group of companies, including facilities, gear companies, and now an online training academy. Mikhail also loves helping other business owners and entrepreneurs to crush their goals. Hi, Mikhail. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, Emily? Thanks for having me here. I'm excited. Me too. So you and I met, I think it was only about a month ago through our mutual friend, Ron Lynch. And yes, it was this legend. great, the man, the legend. Oh gosh, he's amazing. Um, I hadn't been out in like three months or had any human contact. And you guys were my first social event, uh, which was three introverts having a, a long walk and talk about certainly not the weather yeah. and it was like whoa all yeah, these ideas I love that. and i <laughs> we're talking politics we're talking business um and just hearing you talk about business and what you do it's fascinating to me and uh just start out by telling us what do you do what is what is the purpose and the kind of thought behind jujitsu and why people practice it well, uh, when I got out of the military, um, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, but like a lot of people, I, I was a, a bit of a mess looking for my next mission. And I was really good at running somebody else's mission, but what was my mission going to be was it was a huge question for me. Um, I had wrestled growing up and, uh, and somebody invited me uh, to their garage to come wrestle, which you probably shouldn't do. Uh, you, should, you shouldn't accept that invitation probably. And, uh, but I did. And I, uh, and I encountered Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and, and fell in love with it uh, very quickly, uh, which is like wrestling, only it ended in a submission. Um, and it's like tapping somebody out, arm, if you've seen UFC or that kind of stuff. The, uh, the, I, I fell in love with it quickly because my new, it was a new great mission for me to help overcome my personal obstacles, immediate gratification, like you're wrestling somebody uh, to the quote unquote death. And, and that was, uh, that was, that was that was a lot of fun for me, and it was a lot of uh, a lot of connections with how you overcome uh, other obstacles in other situations like business relationships. And I when I looked at it through that lens, it was a it became super even more addictive uh, because I I was improving my processes around overcoming obstacles. Yeah. Overcoming obstacles, I had the pleasure of taking a lesson thanks to you the other week, uh, kind of pleasure. an introductory. Yeah, very cool. Um, everyone there was just such an impressive and professional presence and you guys take everything extremely seriously. It's a true art form, like so much respect. One of the reasons that I wanted to find out more about it is when you described it to me, you said, if you think about it like philosophically, and you can just discuss this more than I can, um, when you're on the mat and somebody is pinning you and you feel like your arm's about to break, you have to be in a very clear frame of mind to solve that problem. What do you mean yes. by solve a problem? Well, every, to me, everything, life's about puzzles. And uh, every situation, you have a bunch of different variables that you're dealing with. Uh, and in, <laughs> in, in a, some static page, right, the puzzles are static. You know, by definition, they are what they are right there in that, in that, in that section of time. Um, when you're rolling with someone else who is, as we call it, you know, we're sparring, uh, and, and rolling with somebody else who's trying to choke you or hold you down, um, not only do you have the puzzle of their variables, their arms, their uh, attacking you, holding you down to deal with, you also have the, uh, the framework of time, right? So you have to, to, hand, to solve an issue under duress in a small period of time. And, and it's, uh, it, it really helps put things into perspective, what is and should be prioritized before other things. Um, and I, I, just, I just love that. If you had a Rubik's Cube that was 
able to also try to unsolve the things that you are solving at the same time. For people who are crazy about puzzles, like that is, is fantastic and it, and it sharpens your mind in some interesting ways. Yeah, that it made sense. Um, I think one thing you said that I remembered was however you approach solving that problem of getting out of yeah. a hold is how you approach all problem solving. Do you I totally panic? Agree. Do you think yeah. logically about it? Yeah. So, no, 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 you, absolutely. Like over and the I, years I, of practicing, like, has the way that you approach problems solved or improved? Is that is that a big takeaway? It is a huge takeaway for me, and they definitely have improved for me personally and for a lot of people that I've trained. Whether we train everybody from like amateurs to pros, uh, professional fighters, and and it's and it's 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 interesting to see people's growth and development when you look at it through that lens, right? Uh, when you it call it, we call it the jujitsu handshake. When you first roll with somebody, um, it's hard to mask who you are. Like people can, you know, mess around and, and put on a mask and all kind of coffee dates and all kind of situations. But when you start to roll with each other, how they handle obstacles is how they handle obstacles. If they shy and wilt under pressure, then that is how they handle things, right? If uh, it, a lot, some people, if they are a bully, it kind of comes out and they try to brute force their way through issues. And that that typically is how they are going to handle those kind of those kind of obstacles. Um, if people kind of handle a, a circuitous route, which is always interesting to assess that type of personality, right? Then, then that's also, uh, it's also interesting. I think an additional interesting thing is how people perceive themselves as opposed to how they actually handle obstacles, which is also, man, it's a, it's an interesting awakening moment for a lot of people. And it can be, a, and it, it can provide for a lot of um, cute, humble moments. Humble moments. <laughs> yeah. uh, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, what you just said reminded me of the 360 degree review, you know, in, mm -hmm. in business and people have that and you get feedback from all of your coworkers or clients or bosses. I mean, debatable how valuable those are, but a lot of people who have those done afterward, they had thought of themselves this way, but other people perceive them this way. Like, actually, no, you're not on top of things. You're actually really disorganized. You mean well, but you yeah. need to work on that kind of an example. And I totally agree. Uh, when I was a kid, I think my father's an engineer. He said one of the uh, greatest superpowers you can ever have is the ability to see yourself as others see you. And, and that really hit me and it still does. And he's always said the, the other great superpower you can have is the way, the ability to see yourself as you truly are. Right? And those are things that I consistently work on. I think the latter is more important because mm -hmm. you could argue it doesn't matter what other people think of you. I, I would humbly disagree with that position. And because perception with our species is so interesting. And, and while a weakness, um, I think it was, I believe it was at Dale Carnegie, right? Who, who, who often talked about being right uh, versus progressing a position, right? Which, is, which I think is, is, is really important because you, if you want to get someone to a position, sometimes it's important to meet their perspective and then kind of assimilate that and then drag that along, right? So they kind of think it was their idea, which is something that I actually teach a lot of our fighters to do, right? In actual fights in, in jujitsu. And the same thing I teach with uh, students when I teach marketing. Oh, you teach Otherwise, it can be too. really. I do, I do, I do, I do. We're okay. industry leaders, um, in uh, in across our groups, and so that's a. Uh, a lot of people have come to us and flown me out to teach my specialty, being um, top of funnel and middle of funnel marketing. Oh, okay. Building automations, uh, in order uh -huh. to progress ideas and all that good stuff. Social media, one of the things right. that we talked about that that time. After yeah, so um, <laughs> I'd say, yeah, yeah. The um, the interesting thing about the middle of funnel marketing for us is, well, marketing in general for me is that it's so similar to jujitsu. I know I paint things, almost everything, through that lens, uh, but creating the ability to automate conversations in a way that. Uh, that progressively pushes the position to some finite place. I think that's that's a superpower that we have the ability to have today. And honestly, not not a lot of people are 
not as many as you'd think are really utilizing. I'll leave it to that. Okay. Right. So with this middle of the funnel, um, what kind of marketing are you spending the most time on or seeing the most, the best results from it, And is this about building community among your existing members at ACES jujitsu club, your business? So I'll, 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 so we own um, a parent company, ACES Jiu-Jitsu Club International, and that company owns a bunch of other companies from facilities to online um, facilities and training academies to physical gear clubs and all that stuff. And I would say one of our strong suits has been our, uh, our acquisitions uh, team. And b because marketing isn't just marketing, right? It's actually the sale as well. And we don't think it's, it's just a separate thing. When it comes to middle of funnel marketing, I think that community is a big deal. Conversations are king. Um, when I say conversations are king, from a prospect position, uh, it shouldn't be about a sale is what we teach our guys. It should be about coaching, right? It should first be about acquiring the goal, uh, making sure to tag the appropriate parts of the conversation so that historically we can go backwards and see how many types of beginning, middle, and end conversations have we had? How many of those are associated with different types of tags? So that we, as we progressively build our data, we can go back and automate different parts of our conversation. And that's something I see a lot of, uh, go ahead, after you. You're talking about um, tagging, are we, where are these conversations happening? They're happening all over the place. They're happening in, um, we even tag our verbal conversations when we do write-ups. Like for, for instance, when I was in the military, uh, post operation or uh, even a field training exercise, we would do something called an AAR, right? Which is called an after action review, right? In the military. And this is something that we, uh, that we lean heavily on, right? Uh, and it's not just a, just a chat session, right? It should allow for you to be able to take parts of the interaction and to be able to sort them places uh, for posterity so that you can go backwards and say, all right, if I could go back and look at the subsections of all financial non-closes, right? What were those issues and who were those people? What was a quick blurb on each of those situations? Who were those people? What about all the situations where we had a big win? All the situations where we had, uh, which, which should be its own tag with its own definitions. Uh, I, I think these, this is extremely important so that your company can learn um, from its wins and from its uh, issues over time. Because when you, let's say you had a hundred financial non-closes, right? And you could go back in time and look at each of those blurbs. You, I'm sure, and we found this, that you could find frequently asked questions, um, frequent obstacles, um, obstacles that you can cover inside of your marketing, um, inside of your copy, uh, inside of your emails, your automated emails, or, or whatever kind of communication you have. And you can also empower new programs, which we've done to increase closes, uh, to, to be able to over, you know what, I know some people uh, might have this type of financial issue and here's how we've been able to help you resolve that. Oh, thanks, I'm so glad you were prepared for this meeting by being able to look at my very real concerns and issues. I, 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 that's, that's, and how would we be able to do that without it just being a hunch, which I think a lot of people think marketing is. And oh, yeah, a hunch, just like logos, logo development. Yeah. It's like, oh, let's have everybody vote on the logo. This one looks good to me. You're not the target. You're biased. <laughs> it's yeah. terrible. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. And that's not uh, even brand. Like that's, have you noticed that where people, they don't understand the concept of brand. They think the brand is the yeah. logo. I it's, agree with you 100%. It's so much more. And it's kind of a disservice to the people who work in branding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, they have oh, a hard a graph picture. too. Yeah. Yeah, so like if you're in market, like I consult on marketing, I specialize in voice, but I do all digital. And it's amazing how many people ask for free advice or, oh, can I pick your brain? Absolutely not. Nope, not yeah. happening. You can pay. I have a call yeah. booking page, but you know, this is my livelihood. And yeah. similar, you know, I bet people ask you for free stuff, free tips, free lessons. Um, yeah, all the which, time. Sure, there's like the idea of the introductory one, but I, I would never, I would never ask to pick a doctor's brain. 
or a lawyer's yeah. brain, like, oh, what's your hourly rate? I get it. I'm paying. It's a professional yeah. service. Branding, professional service, very, very important. Like, did you did you approach branding with knowing kind of your North Star before you even started doing all this and, and kind of the mission? So we have so in the I'll, I'll again I'll come back to the military because um, I learned I learned a lot of lessons there uh, and and I still utilize a lot of those lessons uh, to this day. One of them had to do with something called uh, land nav or land navigation. When you become a sergeant at the time, now it's WLC. It previously it was PLDC, Primary Leadership Drill Course, uh, Ceremony Course. Anyway. Um, one of the most difficult parts for a lot of people was land navigation. Humans don't really walk in a straight line, although we like to think we do in all of our arrogance. Um, and That's so when very you deep. use, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when we use a compass um, and a, to, to shoot an azimuth to find a bearing on where we are, and then we identify where we want to go and where we want to be, we often start walking and we end up moving in a, uh, in a curve or a zigzag or all kinds of stuff. It's important for us to repeatedly ch do a check-in on where we are. For us, our branding is always adjusting and evolving. And we organize times in which we do check-ins on the data uh, to see if we're being effective, right? So it's kind of a relationship with our clients. Is this the brand that you appreciate? And is this the brand that we also want to, that we feel inspired and excited to develop? As a, which can sometimes be like you're talking at somebody, you know, like, this is our brand. This is what we're going to do. I found when we allow clients to be a part of that conversation, not, not like, like, I agree with you, not like, hey, pick this logo, um, but more in-depth conversations around what do you value? What did you appreciate? Um, longer form conversations and then taking a moment to tag those conversations appropriately to be able to pick back up. In the future. So it sounds like you're, you're, you keep coming back to this idea of tagging conversations and mm -hmm. is this happening in a CRM? This is happening in our own sheets that we developed. It's not like a piece of software. We do have our own CRMs um, and some of the tagging happens there, but we've built our own sheets that link to links. I know that sounds it, odd, right? that appropriately speak to those conversations. Yeah, that's important to have a system for it, however you do it yeah. and be consistent yeah. about it. With the brand, it's, I think it's about forming a, a deep emotional connection and in, in many ways, an, a subconscious or unconscious connection, which is how, mm -hmm. that's what a brand is. It lives in the subconscious. It's like, Agreed. do you like a certain car brand or do you like a certain type of computer? Why, why do you like, that one, what did they do to appeal to you? It was a lot subconscious. Agreed, and I think you know you've done your job well when almost somebody has a, they have to ask themselves, well, why do I like it? I just do, you know what I mean? I why do you do. feel so connected? I just yeah. do, and you're like, oh, okay, we did a good job. We've so thoroughly satisfied and, uh, and connected with that individual that they don't know where that brand ends and where they begin which I think is huge. Yeah. One of the brands I've been thinking about lately is Netflix. And mm -hmm. I think about subscription all the time. And I've seen yeah. with the fitness industry and especially during COVID, a lot of streaming because we can't always go in person. It's hard yeah. to go in person. So what have you done? You told me about this. I thought it was really innovative with offering some, some digital training. Yes. Uh, so for us, a lot of our training has happened in our physical locations. Uh, and that, that's, that's all good and well. Previous to the current pandemic, excuse me, um, we already had designs on building an online platform that we were prepping to release in Q4. So we were a little bit ahead of everybody else uh, and, and, and in that regard. But when, when all of this situation happened in our local areas, we actually shut our physical locations down ahead of being forced to so that we can um, have a more smooth transition into an online platform that has interactive classes um, with uh, like with quality uh, world-class coaches who've like won all over and 
and not just like talking at you, but like you're able to actually have a training session either with a training partner um, who you trust or a training dummy or even doing solo training. And a coach is like, no, put your leg there, speaking to you directly. It's almost like a private session. Uh, and that, that's been fantastic and, and grown now where we're bringing in other coaches to allow them to be able to build their own show, their own brand um, inside of our platform, which is a big part of my personal uh, goals because I love, I love serving other people with their dreams. Hmm. That makes sense to promote these other people, sort of influencers, whatever you want to call them, and give them yeah. their own personal brands under the umbrella. Like you said at the beginning, you can't just shove your message and put out an ad. It needs to be yeah. more of a relationship, a give and take. And I know that sounds kind of woo woo and all that. But if you look at the really successful brands out there, like look at newer brands, DTC Casper or Warby Parker, you know, these are brands yeah. that started with brand. They didn't, yeah. oh, we're going to make some glasses and figure out the brand later. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, oh, you can do that later. Your startup, you know, just, just get the MVP out there. And I haven't taken that approach with the startup that I'm working on right now, which is a, an Alexa skill platform. We, we spent yeah. months built, figuring out the brand before we even tried to build a skill. What is the point of this thing? What is it and who's it for? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what, what does it even matter? At, I think this is, a, this is a common issue for quality people. Um, I, I know that just about anything that I do is going to work. Just because I'm, I'm awesome. Right. And that's just been my, <laughs> that's my, that's my personal track record. If I, if I jump into most any business, it works out largely. Right. Um, and I know that you're a similar type of person. And so the question then becomes, what do I want to do that has impact? I want to, I, I have a limited amount of time and I want to make sure I use it wisely. And so I think it's important to do exactly what you just said, which is to identify what is, what is the mission in the first place? How big do we plan on growing it and in what time frame? And if that matters, then we had better create some um, aggressive milestones, right? And, and really think about this, measure five times and cut once, you know, in order to, to, to be effective, as opposed to just throwing stuff at the wall and hoping it works out, which I think is the, the, the modus operandi for a lot of entrepreneurs. Well, it's so easy to do nowadays because advertising is completely democratized, more affordable, better targeted than ever yeah. before. So anybody thinks that they can just do some drop shipping and put up some Instagram ads with typos and like you're selling sunglasses. For sure. And I think for some people, it's uh, because they don't, they don't realize the actual power that they have uh, to scale, right? Um, it, it, selling a few... And I've noticed this whenever I've worked with other entrepreneurs who are like, hey, I want to create some of the stuff that you're doing. Uh, and they realize that first, we, before we release anything, we really dig down, right, uh, to, to make sure that it has strong roots and foundation. Uh, and the thing that I've found is that a lot of people, their dreams are smaller than for whatever reason, maybe because of, of something they're dealing with uh, or, or because of something they don't see. They don't see the vision of what their, their program could be. Uh, and, and I think once we overcome that, and you go, oh my gosh, this could be really huge. Well, then you should treat it that huge, right? How many people are on the planet? Uh, there's, oh my God, there's several billion people. Great. If you had a point of a fraction of a fraction of a percent of, of, of market share, what does that look like? Oh, that's a lot bigger than I thought. Yeah, okay, great. Then let's identify what milestones we have to do in order to get that in the next five years. Yeah. Why five years? Because you should be moving on to something else by that time. I don't know, that's my, that's my personal thing. Right, I mean, five years is even a long time. People, this is such a terrible yeah. interview question. Like back when I had corporate jobs, I remember the worst interviewers, mm -hmm. and it's not an easy thing to do. Interviewing is terrible uh, for everyone involved a lot of the time, but they would say, You're oh, so where it. do you see- I like it. Well, this is a podcast, I mean, in a job interview, yeah. Yeah. which oh, actually okay, okay. should, it should be more like a podcast conversation. It should. I like that. Um, we could talk more about that. But uh, they, these interviews, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be able to define that very succinctly. I might be able to say, this is, this is kind of the way I want my life to look or the way that I want to feel or the impact I want to have. Mm -hmm. I want people to ask me important questions. I want to be seen as somebody that's 
respected and experienced enough to answer important questions. I don't know. And instead of saying, well, I want my business to be at this exact point, which maybe you, maybe you have thoughts on this. Is it better to set a specific goal like that? Like with your business, did you say this is our revenue goal or with a lot of startups, their goal is I want to exit in three years. What do you think about starting from a place like that? I think that it is, there's three concepts, right? Um, I call it a pencil pen marker, right? So pencil is kind of lightly etched in. It's an idea. Uh, a pen is a little more structured and put together. And then you have marker, like marker ideas are, those are permanent marker, right? Those are, those are in there. I mm. think that uh, impact goals are more malleable and they can grow with you more easily. So I think that's definitely a marker, right? And it's something that you can connect with and meet in the middle with your clients and your secondary clients, which are your staff, right? And partners, which I think there you should treat those like clients as well. And your other ideas like revenue, which are important, are more like pin goals, right? Because sometimes you can undershoot those and like, oh man, we aimed way too low, right? Uh, and, and sometimes they, they, they have to be retooled and reworked. Uh, I think your exit though is a pencil idea. That's an option because you never know. What if in five years you do an assessment? It's like any relationship. It could be like a romance. If, what if in five years you decide, no, I do want to be, still be here, right? Making that in marker, I think is a, is, is a, you don't totally know who that person is going to be. That version of you is going to be in five years. So I think having some structure though, it's not a bad thing. Um, in five years, I plan to accomplish this and then I'll be able to make my decision. That being said, I am at the same time a huge proponent for building things ready to sell, right? I have everything we build is ready to sell. If somebody wanted to buy, here you go. All the financials are together, all the everything is ready for you. Um, SOPs, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so I think it's kind of a recipe in that regard. Does that make sense? Definitely. I like setting goals. I find that a, a one year period is a lot more palatable or uh, mm -hmm. easier to wrap my head around than a five year goal. But mm -hmm. I have tried to set goals for various periods of time. So I like that. I that. It's almost like the crawl, walk, run, but I like the way that you explained it better. And it made me think of crosswords. And like when I'm feeling really confident, I'll be doing it in pen. I do it in pen yeah. every week. It just ends up messy, but. <laughs> yeah, like life, <laughs> Yeah, like business. We don't, we don't walk in a straight line. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well. Da be daring, I, I like that, be daring, put it in pen. I like to do in Sudoku pen. in pen, there you go. <laughs> are, are you a Sudoku guy, not a crossword guy? I, I like both, honestly. It depends on the situation. Sometimes if I've been like deep in development for days, I like to work with the numbers um, more than words. Sometimes I'm in a more creative space, then I will do puzzles that are in alignment to help pull that out, right? Like well, one words. reason I was thinking you might have an affinity for any of these verbal puzzles is I remember you saying something about how much words matter in language, yes. like when you're on the mat, um, being in a flow state with your partner and the way that you speak about it or to them what, what, what did you mean by that? Uh, so words, you're communicating so many things you're attempt. Uh, we are attempting to communicate so many ideas uh, in just a few words. And it's so important to be effective and efficient so that you don't have to go backwards um, and correct things or correct them as, as little as possible. I think a lot of people just kind of bandy about with those words and just like people bandy about with interactions and that inefficiency hurts them. And it's kind of sad. Um, it's, it's, it's the same thing inside of a fight and same thing inside of all type of relationships from romantic to friendships. Uh, and for when I talk to fighters, for instance, one of the biggest hurdles that fighters go through is self-talk. Um, when you're inside of a fight with another person, it's extremely important that you are present and in that moment, because right now you're fighting another person, but if you do it incorrectly, you're fighting two people, them and yourself. So it's important to have like very direct command-based 
um, leadership, strong conversations with strong leadership when you're speaking to yourself uh, to promote the next position, no matter what, to promote whatever that next milestone is, no matter what, to be able to uh, disassociate uh, to a degree from, from small foibles to progressively identify what driving forward looks like and, and to do it uh, mercilessly um, with yourself and with the other party and with the, with the I, when I teach pros, I think I also say with the viewer, because you you're, you're thinking of from your perspective, from their perspective, and from a third party perspective at the same time, if in order to do in order to fight well, right. Uh, and I think that each of those interactions that you have is a conversation. Uh, or uh, the wrong timing, right? And you could totally throw off what you meant to communicate, right? Or you could really drive a point home. Maybe people would benefit from a little more hand-to-hand -hand combat and rolling and that whole way of communicating instead of this thin digital communication where there are so many misunderstandings and tone is misinterpreted left and right. I agree. Um, I have seen, it, it's funny, I've seen friends who don't roll with each other for a while and you see misunderstandings pop up or people who are dating each other who are training. Um, and then they roll together and, and then it's like converse, it's like all of a sudden you get in sync, right? In alignment. It's like, oh, I see you. I see how you handle things. I see where you're coming from all of a sudden. Uh, it's, pretty, must, it's pretty phenomenal. Interesting. That must be processed on such a nonverbal powerful level in the brain that we probably couldn't it's almost like when someone's on a a drug experience like a plant-based medicine experience it comes back and like yeah. i can't even describe it to you but i just i feel it i know it there are no words yeah you synced up yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely wow i love that um well we have to wrap up here but i know I we know. can keep going for hours yeah. um i know that you are an avid reader and I yes. wondered if you had any books that you could recommend. Absolutely. I know you asked me for a book and I am um, a, a super achiever because I don't believe you can achieve too much. I don't know why people call it overachiever. It's a ridiculous word. <laughs> You're um, right. <laughs> <laughs> how can you overachieve? How dare you? Impossible. Achieve, right? Um, yeah. So you asked for one and I brought uh, four because I think three is predictable. And can you see a, like a window into my mind? <laughs> All right. So, uh, so uh, the first one, is a book that I recommend, not only recommend, but I uh, have, uh, can I even buy for friends sometimes, especially when they're going through different problems in their lives. This one's called uh, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Um, it is a, it, it's part of our leadership program and we train staff actually. Uh, and I think it's such a fantastic book on overcoming some of our blockades when it comes to our vision and, uh, and new obstacles we can accidentally put in our way right? When we're attempting to bridge the gap from here and where we would like to be there. So anyway, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, fantastic book. Another, and it's also, you can see, not that, not that big, a, a huge a commitment, but it is very efficient and effective. Another really efficient and effective book um, that I also get for friends is called The Science of Getting Rich, right? As you can see, not a very big book um, in pages, but a huge book um, in impact. Uh, the words in this book have have helped so many friends of mine. Um, so it's Wallace D. Waddles. I know this is going to be on audio as well. So Wallace D. Waddles, the science of getting rich. Small investment, huge return, right? In that book, because um, you're investing your time, right? Another uh, one of my favorite books, um, and uh, that that has also a lot of my staff has really appreciated, because uh, we have our own book clubs, right? Depending on which department or whatnot you are you're working with so we each have a focus and everyone's growing together in a similar direction another one that people still reference and we read every year together is who moved my cheese by spencer johnson right um and man who uh, another fantastic book on timing right and i think uh something we used to talk about in the military which is like learning to embrace the suck which is how you have to constantly be uh 
scratching and sniffing. You'll get it if you read the book uh, for new opportunities, no matter how sated you think you are, right? Uh, and of course, finally, the, I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. John Maxwell years ago because he was uh, uh, friends with my uncle. And he, uh, man, this book was a game changer. I thought I understood leadership um, to a degree because I've been fortunate to, to work under fantastic leaders in the military. Um, uh, this really put a lot of the experiences and lessons and mentorship that I received into words, um, which is called the five levels of leadership, right? And so those are my four books uh, that I recommend. None of them paid me for that. Those are all my, <laughs> sponsored by none of them. I feel like in 2020, you have to say that. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. but those, those are all impactful books and I, and I wish the best upon anybody that reads any one or all of them because um, they're, that you can take a lot from them. Oh, I love those recommendations. All of the links to everything we've talked about will be at beetlemoment.com slash podcast. This is episode 73 with Mikhail Abdullah and he has so much cool stuff going on. So we'll, we'll put all of the information in the show notes, beetlemoment.com slash podcast, including Mikhail, let people know where they can connect with you and ACEs and your various Brazilian jiu-jitsu social media resources. Absolutely. So you can uh, just go to acejujitsuclub.com or if you're not in, in an area for a physical uh, physical facility, you can uh, also go to online.acesjujitsuclub.com um, to, to check that out. I know you, I mean, we, we are right now giving away a free week of training for anybody who wants to just try it out, right? And see, see what that actually is like, no matter what situation you're in, whether you have a training partner or not, um, or you think you'd be great at it, or you don't think you would be. We have coaches to be able to help even the most beginning of beginners. Uh, and so go to online.acesjujitsuclub.com and we'll be able to hook you up there uh, as far as that's concerned. You can reach me out on EIG if you have any questions at CerebralBJJ um, on IG or find me on Facebook or find the Aces Jiu Jitsu Club on Facebook and we'll gladly take care of you. We have a, a team that loves to share. And if you're an entrepreneur who who's like, hey, help me out too. Uh, I'm talk to Emily. <laughs> if you want to ask me questions too, um, then then cool. Um, but yeah, that's fine. I, I I love to help people. Yeah, love it. Well, you are certainly a master of what you do, and I can't wait to get to know you better. I'm really glad that we became friends. The magic of Austin. You never know who's right under yeah. your nose. So. Right? Thank you, Mikhail, for sharing your knowledge and can't wait to experience more Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and uh, get into these books that you recommended. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on and for sharing with all these awesome people and for creating kind of a space for people to grow. You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs>